Oh, that looks beautiful. Oh, that smells amazing. So standard look, look, procedure look, is you take look, the yeah, yogurt. Look, take a lesson from here. And, you put like this, and you just combine you the yogurt with it. Uh -huh. Hi everyone, it's me Blanche and welcome back to Feast in the Middle East. This time I'm coming at you from the Palestinian town of Hebron, otherwise known as Khalil. Now Hebron is Palestine's largest city and commercial center with over 160,000 Palestinians living here. While the heart of this city was once a bustling economic center, it has since been on Israeli military lockdown since 1994. About 800 Israeli settlers, guarded by 2,000 soldiers, have occupied the center of this town, causing severe disruptions to daily life. 40% of homes have been forcibly emptied and Palestinians are denied access to much of the city with cage-like checkpoints. Almost 2,000 businesses have been forced to close. As a result, 75% of Palestinians here live below the poverty line with the average income at about $160 a month. Today, the city center has become a veritable ghost town. However, we did manage to find an unexpected oasis of hope. The Hebron Rehabilitation Committee was established to incentivize the return of Palestinians to the old city by improving the livelihood and economic activity in the area. Now, the committee has worked to revitalize the old city of Hebron as a cultural and economic center, carrying out projects of architectural preservation with international aid. This initiative has transformed 1,000 properties so far. I was in awe of what they were able to do despite all of their surrounding challenges. In this part of town, there's also a serene friendship garden where I had the best mekluba I have ever tried in Palestine. So for those of you watching for the food, you will not be disappointed. Okay, we took a long walk in Hebron and right now we're going to share a special Palestinian treat. It's called mekluba, which means upside down. So let's take a look at how they make this dish. See, so mekluba means upside down in Arabic. There we go. And so it's inverted, it's caramelized onions and vegetables, rice and chicken. It's called ma'lube. There's an art to removing it slowly. Yeah. It's beautiful, look at that. I know. It's a rice cake. <laughs> yeah, it's like well, a big rice cake. A savory rice cake is what it is. It has... Oh, that looks beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that smells amazing. And so they uh, put slivered almonds on top, you as you can see. Them. They've been toasted. Look at how he artfully and, uh, separates it so everyone can get a portion. Into the sawati? Oh, So they all worked on this for our group here. We are so lucky. This is a very special dish you, you don't find in restaurants very often. It's a definitely a Palestinian treat. And it's by handmade. Uh, handmade. Uh, handmade. Uh, original. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> and so fresh and so delicious. I yes, think. absolutely. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. I know. Hatete, <laughs> and you can see it's the cauliflower. There's the cauliflower there. So onions, <laughs> almonds. Mm. There we go. Shukran. <laughs> That's a lot of food. This is standard procedure again. You should eat a pretty light lunch. Brilliant. Light? I like it. I usually, I usually eat uh, a light lunch. Okay. This is not a light lunch, no. No light lunches here. I have a very you short, have I have a very short have, lunch, 23 minutes Yeah, but you have, you have to have every day. Listen, give me time to eat. Have a, have a lunch, have light lunch. dinner. Exactly. exactly. I know. It's better. It's better. The cook was so sweet, she also accommodated our vegetarian guests with this extra dish of mujaddara. Would you look at those caramelized onions and almonds over that lentil and rice goodness? I, however, was perfectly content with my very own heaping plate of makluba. Now, if you are drooling right now, check out my entree playlist and I already have videos on how you can make these dishes. And my new cookbook has these recipes as well. <laughs> So these are the luckiest animals in the world because what may, what uh, Salson just did was the food that was left over on our plates. Guess what? The dogs get to eat it. Yeah. And the chickens, they are the happiest animals eating this yummy grub. 
They're yeah, eating makluba. It's special food, but uh, this is, is will have uh, another taste. Yes, yes. <laughs> Cooking very... food is another taste. Absolutely, that's very smart. Thank you very much. Very smart, look at that. Chickens eating makluba, dogs eating makluba. It's a family affair. That dog's going to town. No, I don't worry, I won't take your food. I no doubt decided to give that dog his space to chow down on his mekluba, and so I hit the town running for some more shopping. Now, if you want more videos like this, please leave your comments below, and for more unique Middle Eastern narratives, make sure to hit subscribe. If you want meticulous directions on how to make mekluba, mujadara, or other classic Middle Eastern specialties, my new cookbook, Feast in the Middle East, is now available internationally. This hardback book also has family stories, recipe history, and beautiful photos. Just go to feastinthemiddleeast.com and click on the cookbook tab for more information.